Come on! Ladies and gentlemen, Manchester United are FA Cup champions and for the final time this season, the United Twins need, need to speak about it. Big ups to everybody oh, inside, man. man. A little man. public service announcement for everybody. Expecting doom and gloom. Nah, this ain't happening around here. Uh -uh. For this episode, uh -uh. it ain't happening. We've damn near suffered throughout the entirety of this campaign. And now you expect us to come over here on a level-headed movement. On a somber, in a somber mood. No, 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 no. We've just beaten Manchester City 2-1 in the FA Cup final. True redemption after what happened last season. Ending the season on a sour note. Not again. And our damage was done in the first half. First and foremost, I have to say credit to the manager, Eric Ten Hag. Oh, bro. His coaching staff, the players who out there gave their rules. Everything they had going into the game was left out there on the football pitch without question. The most committed performance I have seen, I don't know about you, Cappy, but I have seen from this Manchester United squad this season. We were compact, pressing with the four players, preventing City from easily passing the ball into central midfield. And, and you could tell they were all growing frustrated across the back line. In wide areas, there were uncharacteristic mistakes that some were unforced, some were unforced, okay? But I also genuinely believe that the way we were set up and the execution of our tactical setup out of possession contributed to their short wires, which is something you really don't see very often from Manchester City. Let me tell you something. That mistake by Oscar Vardiola and Stefan Ortega was a nightmare for Manchester City and really embodied how they were playing as a collective at the time, right? Yeah. But the build up to that Kobe Manu strike was just exquisite, bro. From the Rashford switch to Bruno Fernandes having a mental map of where Kobe was going to be situated. The first time no look passing and Kobe opens up his body ready to slot it home emphatically. In the preview, CM questioned whether this team could put it together for one game. Even in a watch it on. Shout out to everybody that was there by the way. Make sure you look out for them in the future too. There were questions around whether Manchester United could be efficient when it matters most. Oh my goodness were they. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing seeing both of those guys score and one of the biggest stages in, in the English footballing calendar. Two academy products who have chipped in and have shown growth throughout this campaign. I loved what Eric said in one of the post-match press conferences. I think it was BBC. He just said, let's all calm down about Kobe. Man. Let's, let's not do the typical English thing of rising expectations to the moon. Gradual growth leads to consistency and longevity, while exponential rises can also lead to catastrophic crashes. Ooh. And we witnessed that way too many times with guys who have shown true potential, but haven't been able to put it together because of a mix of deficiencies Manchester United have suffered within a 10 year span. The interesting thing about moving on from here is that business is about to pick up. Yeah. Teams are already planning for the future. And I guess the biggest decision to be made will be on Eric Ten Hag. Whether Ineos will continue to believe in uh, him to be the guy. To be the guy. Ultimately, it won't be just one game that determines his fate. <laughs> he has been extremely bullish on the fact that this squad has been depleted for a long time. And without saying it, you kind of get the vibe that he has also hinted that the quality of this team needs to improve, which you know we all have been speaking about that for a long, long time. Yeah. When we've had players leaving in the last couple of seasons, you need to sign replacements who will raise the ceiling. That doesn't always mean superstar, blockbuster. But what it does mean is that you must recruit personnel who have the mental resolve on top of the physical and technical attributes to make an impact in their own specified role. Look around the league. Some of the top teams we've been up against have game changers off the bench who are hungry to earn their stripes even after reaching what some would see to be the pinnacle. There should never be a period of satisfaction. 
not at Manchester United. It's always about what's next. But for me, at least, it has just felt like there have been players, past and present, who have been comfortable with their position and where they are. That doesn't move the needle, nor promote an intrinsically motivated attitude. That has to change and fast. It will take some time because, like we all know, you can't get rid of a bunch of players and then replace a bunch of players in one summer, especially with the reported situations that Manchester United have found themselves mm. in over the last couple of summers, which has required us to bring in loan signings like a, a Valtvek course, like a Marcel Sabitzer, like a, a Sofia and Amnabat, like a, a, a Sergio Region. Those things, and, and there are many situations that need to be sorted out, and it will be a gradual rise back to the top, if there will be a rise, because we don't quite know just yet. We're hoping there will be. But, more of the story, things take time, and as long as you are seeing small signs here and there, small pieces that are being put into the puzzle here and there that can can give you the visual rep uh, representation of the fact that things are going in the correct direction, then mentally, at least, you will be put at ease somewhat. But I think the biggest issue within the Manchester United fan base this season especially is the fact that week in, week out, you tune in and you see the same thing. There are no differences, there are no changes, and that, that that in itself brings utter frustration and a lack of patience. One more thing that I wanted to sign out on are the notable names out there who shun. Some may have gone under the radar, like the Sofian Amrabat, who displayed, it was a warrior type performance out there from him was one of the players who really set the tone on how we defended all game long. Rafael Varane, in his final game for the club, I'm going to miss that guy, man. Winning headers, crucial interceptions, and of course, Licha, and his ability to not just defend with the best of them, but his ball progression is integral to our success. And I hope yeah. next season, on a larger scale, he will be able to display that. Marcus Rashford, who you could see at the end, was visually breaking down, which can sometimes be the result of offloading all of the burdens you've carried in a specific period of time. He has a lot of responsibility and no doubt about it, this is, hasn't been a high point overall, but his commitment to excellence in execution, shout out to Bret Hart, hey. was not to be questioned today. Sidetrack, by the way, very quick sidetrack. I think the defensive combination of Amrabat, Garnacho, and wan in that second half Helped to at least slow down at times. And Jeremy Doku, who for me was extremely dangerous, coming on for them in that second half. For Bruno Fernandes, it was a perfect way to complement his player Tribune piece a day prior. When he showcases that level of patience, composure and, and the quality of his final ball, as he did today, really unplayable man. A really top individual to have in. He carried himself ever so well as the leader of this squad. I could keep on going on and on about each individual performance. But it was literally, for us in this moment, the perfect performance. Of course, that also says that improvements have to be made. Mm -hmm. But right now, at least, we secured the all-important result and can move ahead swiftly afterwards. Okay, so... A few housekeeping stuff. Summer antics for the United Twins. There's a lot of football going on. Of course, Euros content. Dang. We might do a, a, a bit of content centering around how some of the Manchester United players are doing at the Euros. Of course, for myself personally, the, the Copper America will be beginning for both of us, to be fair. The uh -huh. Copper America will be beginning in late june jamaica will be in that competition so i hope to be covering that whether it be over here on cm22 ent or the second channel cm22 so keep your eyes peeled for that one and I, I know the games are going to be starting pretty late but it'll be cool if uh if i can cover it and and, and see jamaica's progress in the competition compared to to the last time jeez 
<laughs> there's Olympics preseason stuff starting in July. So, um, you know, there'll be a quick break and I'm sure we will be back for, for preseason covering what's going on there in the tour, wherever Manchester United decide to go. I'm sure they go in the US and, and they'll go somewhere else. They, they go all over the place these days for preseason. Now, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it because I feel like it affects the, the preparations that players can do in terms of pro properly preparing their bodies physically, mentally for a season. I don't think a whole load of travel is healthy for them, especially when they potentially come back from trips already and, and they just want to settle down and really so, get back to work. It, it disturbs the body a little bit. But, but we'll see what happens there, man. We both just want to say thank you for your patience for your support over the course of this season this channel in itself uh, continues to grow the slow grind man the slow grind is always the good grind and and you learn things along the way so make sure you're hitting that like button if you're enjoying these videos subscribing if you new sharing to your friends and frenemies because that is integral to the growth of the channel the discoverability of this channel if you want more people to see it if you want these videos to continue being pumped out not just towards the end of this campaign, but next season as well, because we're literally setting our sights now on next season and hoping that we can we can have a, a nice bit of growth to begin the campaign and, and to potentially end 2024, going into 2025, which time flies, man. I'll tell you that time flies. That. We've been making content for a good few years now. We, we put out a lot of videos. We've taken our time and we've really studied uh, what it means to be in this space and and how we can improve and, and the videos that we make whether it's the united twins whether it's watching ongs the, the little united reports that i was I, I did a few times as well we've just been experimenting and trying our best to see what works see what doesn't work especially for our schedules because we we have a lot of stuff going on on the outside which uh, can take up our time for the most part but hey man hard work you don't get repaid without hard work. So we're willing to put that in. And we appreciate you guys who continuously support every single week. Every single time you see a, a United Twin video or a video from CM22 ENT, you hit that like, you subscribe. If you're new, you share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not ending this way. You're right, doing it. We've seen it all. We've won the law. We're Man United and we're never gonna stop. Hey, 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 hey.